So to the Canadian Football League talk as we enter Labor Day Classic weekend, I think I'm starting to realize why a distant fourth, speaking of polls, was the Montreal-Ottawa game. Like, is there any intrigue? Can people... Nobody's talking about the Montreal-Ottawa game Friday night. A lot of it has to do with the Saskatchewan-Winnipeg game. Obviously, that's where the most of our viewers are. But now, with Bo Levi Mitchell coming off the six-game injured list early and being available to the Calgary Stampeders to practice this week and for Monday's game against Edmonton, I got to think, Darren, this was in our quick six. You're not taking him off if you don't plan to play him. Why would you? Yeah, I don't I don't know. The only way reason you'd take him off is to play him. I mean... I would think he'll play. Again, I just don't really know. You know, maybe he's completely healthy. Maybe it's not an issue anymore. Maybe it, w- it's, it wasn't as serious as we originally maybe thought it was. Um, but, yeah, I got to think that if he's healthy, he's playing. There's no way he's going to sit on the sidelines if he's capable of playing and has no chance to re-injure it. I mean, if it's something that could get worse, then maybe you keep him there as an emergency. Maybe you keep him, you know, Look, at they need to win football games. This is a shortened season. It's only 14 games. Calgary needs to win, so maybe they need Bo in the, in the fourth quarter. But, yeah, I don't think you bring him off unless you're planning on playing him. Well, I saw my very good friend, uh, Luke Mullender, tweeting this morning that if he's the Ottawa Red Blacks, he is making a, did you see it, a monster package available to the Calgary Stampeders in a trade for Bo Levi Mitchell. And I just think if, are we this early on, Writing off the season for the Ottawa Red Blacks and what's a very tight Eastern Division. Not writing them off if they get Bo, right? And that's where no, but you're, he's coming. You're writing it off if you're making that trade. Well, if you're making the trade, I'm not for, writing it off. But you know what I mean. If you're making that, that that they're not getting anywhere without making a move, and if you bring in Bo, Ottawa can turn things around pretty quickly and get rolling. I think that's what he's saying. And. You know, Calgary's in a good spot where they might consider it. You don't want to have a quarterback controversy in your locker room. Um, you want to have the guy and know he's the guy. And if that's the case in Calgary, and I think in that tweet, Luke mentioned Matt Nichols going the other way. So you have a veteran backup, mm-hmm. clearly defined one and two roles. Um, it could happen, but I don't think Calgary's going to be quick to pull the trigger on anything. It's not like they're 3-0 and with Jake Mayer at quarterback, right? right? It's so a little early. It's a little early. They got to see more from him. There has to be results. Or Calgary's got to be writing off their season, too. And that's not happening yet. Yeah, but I mean, if they're, I, I got to think that uh, we're talking about Luke Mullender, nine year CFLer, former Michigan State Spartan, Great Cup champion, that is, I got to think he's just spitballing. He doesn't know. Of course. I can't think that this is a where there's smoke, there's fire situation. I, I say it again. Unless Matt Nichols is hurt, which I don't think that he is. I've just never been a Matt Nichols fan as a quarterback. I'm sorry. I said it. He's got me blocked on Twitter for, for that opinion, I think. Matt does? Yeah. <laughs> which I'm not sure. I don't care. But are we writing off Matt Nichols already? At what point do the Ottawa Red Blacks fan base or even the Red Blacks themselves look back and say, we should have kept Nick Arbuckle, who is now usurp Macbeth in Toronto, was the starting quarterback of the Toronto Argonauts. Well, they had him. Mm -hmm. And let him go and made the conscious decision to go with Matt Nichols. I don't understand. I know. um, But Matt Nichols has been a winning quarterback in the league and he's, and he's done some good things. Um, And it's all about your familiarity, right? And and your preference. I mean, all of these players in the Canadian football league are there for a reason because they're talented Mm -hmm. and it's, and it's a matter of fit and it's a matter of, Hey, if, if, if there's a guy that you don't like, if it's Arbuckle, you don't like, and you don't believe in him, he'll never be your quarterback. doesn't matter how good he is. If you don't believe in him, he can never be your guy. And you know that. It happens in life all the time, right? Once you've made up your mind that you're out, there's no coming back from that. Mm -hmm. So it's the same with quarterbacks. You really have to like him. He has to fit your system. If I come in and I have this greatest offense ever and it, it revolves around a mobile quarterback, you can't have me change it. Even if you give me Tom Brady or Peyton Manning, My whole system's developed around a mobile quarterback or whatever. So a lot of it's preference more than skill set. Well, it's interesting that you saw that tweet from Luke Mulliner about a proposed trade for Bo Levi Mitchell. I don't think that's going to happen yet, but we're in a a year here, a COVID-shortened year, a 14-game season in the CFL. That trade deadline in the CFL is generally, I believe, October the 9th. And I remember it because it's my parents' anniversary. What's the trade deadline this year? At what point do you 
start making earth shattering changes. When do you think what we have is what we have? Because we're going into week five kicking off on Friday night. Like, you know what I mean? That early season figuring out what you have and the settling. Has that happened through four weeks? Do we do teams no, know what they have? Not yet. Not yet. I mean, you look at some teams have played three games like Saskatchewan and they'll play their fourth mm -hmm. this weekend on Labor Day on Sunday. No, I think, you know, it's going to take six or seven. I think when you get to seven, you're at the midway point of the season. That's the point where you have – that's your last chance. I, I feel that's the last chance to really make substantial roster moves that can completely change the culture of your team and the outlook of your team. Is kind of the midway point, but everybody will see it a little bit differently. It'll it'll you know sway by a couple of weeks on either side, leading up to the trade deadline in October. But they'll have a little bit of time through September, if they if if anybody wants to make a move. But there will be no recovering from being 0 and 5, 0 and 6, or 1 and 6. Right this season, there just won't be. It's it's not like other years where you can be the BC Lions and run it back and sneak into the playoffs and get to a Grey Cup. Right, so. They've got to make up their mind pretty quickly. We'll start seeing moves happen here, I think, after week four, maybe five, six, seven. I think that'll be the sweet spot. Wow. Hey, everybody. Thanks for watching the RP Show on YouTube. And don't forget, we're live daily on YouTube from noon to 2 Eastern. If you like what you see, hit subscribe. And if you like the program, check around for other segments of The Rod Peterson Show here on YouTube.